Today, our group members, Michelle, Samuel, Binging, Shirley, and Skylar, will present our group final result of the project, Machine Intelligence Forex Trading, to all of you guys. Forex exchange market is one of the largest and most liquid financial instrument markets in the world, with pricing awkwardly continuously 24 hours a day, five days a week. The forex rate is the price of one currency paid in terms of another. It is the most important component in any country's economic systems and is a measure of the economic health of that country. The exchange rates have a tremendous influence on the trade relationship and affect the common man's standard of living. An accurate prediction of forex rate can help in maintaining the trade relationships properly and lead the economic to be stronger. Thus, the prediction of forex rate is paramount and it should never be underestimated. However, the daily forex rate of a currency pair is a collection of chronologically recorded observations. They are intrinsically non-stationary and chaotic, often behave ne nearly like a random work process, so the prediction work is a highly complicated task. To fill the gap between academic finance and professional finance, we need to focus on analyzing some recent advances in research papers, improving the predictability, and then from our own approach to learn to trade successfully. For our objective, first, leveraging the deep learning and technical analysis to accurately predict the price movements and trade forex exchange. Secondly, comparing the performance on the existing methods and performing the backtesting for eight major currency pairs. And thirdly, identify research gaps in literature and propose a novel contribution. I will pass to Shirley to let her introduce the related work we have done for this project. Thanks for Scalar's speech. I would like to talk about the relative work and the relevant methods that we use in this project. To achieve the requirement of four research paper per person, each team member has been reading a large number of stock of Forex trading research paper from elsewhere, IEEE, Google Scholar, and other literature websites in order to find out the different models that we want to implement. In addition, we shared our reading in the Google Drive and had a Zoom meeting twice a week to discuss the progress of each model in case any overlaps within the group. The following table that lists out 20 research papers published between 2016 and 2020 that we implement for this project. We have focused on for, uh, work related to the technical analysis, recurrent neural network, uh, convolutional neural network, deep lear uh, deeper reinforcement learning, and also a few ensemble strategies such as random forest with LSTM and random forest with DNN. For example, in the deep reinforcement learning, for financial trading using press trailing paper. The paper constructs three heading layers with 64 neurons in each layer, and the one output layer with three neurons that corresponding to the three Q values. A uh, prelude pre uh, activation function was used for these heading layers. Well, no activation function were used for the output layer. The Adam algorithm was employed for learning the parameters of the network. So after we finish the backtesting for all of models, we generate all of the backtesting results and construct the correlation CN model for our novel approach. I will pass to Bingi to let him to go through the backtesting result for this project, and Mac will talk about the correlation CN model. Thanks, Shirley. So we have implemented, trained, and backtested various techniques. They can be grouped into deep neural networks, convolution neural network, reinforcement learning. RNN and a few which are in a combination of CNN along with RNN. So we've noticed that RNNs were doing better in comparison with DNN, CNN and reinforcement learning uh, for in most of the cases. We've also noticed that CNNs when used in combination with RNN, the results are slightly better in some of the cases. There's also not much work done in this area and there's quite some scope here. So this uh, good results in, for a combination of CNN and RNN could be due to the fact that CNNs are good in bringing out the complex representations because they use convolution filter in multiple phases to draw some representations. And RNNs are good in identifying the directional effect of the price. And so together they bring the best of both worlds, making predictions even solid. We have also 
tried out uh, three ensemble strategies wherein the results from deep neural network and other algorithms are infused together by techniques like genetic algorithm, majority weighting, and things like that. And we've noticed that ensemble models always outperformed all other techniques. And the results were also good uh, for most of the current C pairs. This can be due to the fact that some models are good with some currency pairs and in ensemble learning, good learners are given higher weights, thereby uh, the profitability is increased in most of the cases. And so th this is one good area wherein uh, some more research can be perceived. Uh, over to you, Mike. Uh, thank you very much for that, Bingy. So uh, based on our, um, our review of the relevant literature, and our findings from backtesting, uh, we uh, propose a novel idea, which uh, we call the correlation CNN, and to the best of our knowledge has not been done before. So the correlation CNN or core CNN is a uh, multitask regression model that uses the eight by eight matrix of the 20 day lagging window of daily FX returns to produce a return prediction for each of the eight currency pairs that we identified at the next time interval. So that'd be the next day. Um, the base model or the base architecture for the base model is two, convolu uh, two convolution layers followed by three linear layers. The model produces, uh, again, the returns for each of the eight pairs at the next day. Uh, the motivation behind this particular architecture was threefold. One, our um, survey literature suggested that CNN and RNNs um, one, they were under-researched, the combination of two, and also the um, CNNs tended to produce some reasonably well-performing um, results. Uh, the second reason being that currencies do not operate in a vacuum. Um, they're all interrelated and they're acted on by the same market forces. Therefore, by using the correlation image, um, we are able to exploit the relationships between the currencies. And lastly, uh, the use of correlation and covariance matrices are quite common constructs in uh, financial literature. Um, so in processing the data needed for the correlation CNN, we uh, use the prior period relative change, otherwise known as price return. So using this method accounts for um, anomalies such as uh, the relative scale differences between various FX pairs or their price, as well as non-stationarity of the price levels through time. So here what we have is um, two sample images of, or a sample uh, image of one correlation matrix and also the same correlation matrix as a simple numeric matrix. Uh, so during back testing, uh, we labeled any buy signals that is generated um, as a, sorry, we labeled any positive returns that is predicted as a buy and any negative returns that is predicted as a sell. Uh, with that, I'll pass on to my colleague Bingy to discuss some of the variations of the models we used. Thank you, Mike. After we've noticed that uh, this approach wherein we use correlation data and pushing it to CNN are giving some promising results, we tried out quite a few variations of it. And we're going to talk about some of the important variations which showed promising results. The first one is to basically uh, use the complex features we get from correlation CNN and uh, push them into an LSTM model. So for this, we trained the correlation CNN model and we extracted the CNN features from that. And, and we used the CNN features used a time step for it, pushed it into a simple LSTM model and retrained them again uh, using the same target values. The result seems to be good. And another approach was to have an LSTM layer before the CNN model. The idea is to see if we can exploit the temporal dimensions of the correlation data we have we created as part of the input data. So in order to implement this, we added two LSTM layers in the beginning of correlation CNN and then the model was trained uh, entirely based on the target Y values again. I'll pass on to my colleague, Mike, to discuss about the other variations of the approach. Yep, uh, so we, we have uh, two more variations on the approach and the 
a design process was iterative to inherit from the previous um, iterations and to improve up on them. So the variation three or model three is where we used the prior model, but this time we created another input feature, a trend indicator that was made up of um, the five day simple moving average minus the 20 day simple moving average. And this was fed into a separate uh, neural network made up of three uh, GRU layers followed by a dense layer. At the final step, this is concatenated with uh, the dense layer in model two and passed in for regression. So the intuition behind this is to capture the uh, directionality of the trend, as well as the relationships and the temporal, um, temporal relationships between the currency pairs. Uh, moving on to the final variation. So the final variation is the same as variation three or model three, but we use model three to extract the features and then we pass these features into a multi-output like GBM regressor. Uh, the intuition here is that we're using a much more powerful regression layer to be able to predict the returns at the next, um, at the next day. Uh, in evaluating our results for our proposed models, we looked at two metrics. Uh, the first of which was the valuation of performance um, via root mean squared error. To do this, we compared our models against two other regression, CNN-based regression models from the literature that we surveyed. Um, based on this process, uh, our, all our models were able to significantly improve upon the next best uh, baseline model. Um, our best model was able to produce a uh, RSME of 6.38 times 10 to negative three with the next best, uh, next best baseline model being only 1.27 times 10 to the negative two. Um, then moving on, we uh, also evaluated our results against both regression and classification models from literature. Uh, via backtesting and trading. So we backtested uh, the model and the profitability using total cumulative pips across one trading year. And this is across the eight currency pairs that we identified. So in visualizing the total uh, cumulative pips across all eight currency pairs, we have the graph on the top of the slide. It shows that our model was uh, able to uh, produce a backtesting trading result on par, if not better, than most of the models that we surveyed. However, you can see from this that there is a dislocation between technical proficiency, which is the root mean squared error, um, versus the real world trading uh, results. So for a deeper discussion of our results, I'll pass it on to my colleague, Sam. And so this slide shows all our backtesting results across our models and eight currency in full. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Mike. So I'm going to start off uh, with a discussion and some observations throughout the process that we've made. Uh, so when we make observations uh, that regard the performance of our results, there are some key uh, behavioral components of foreign exchange markets uh, that must be accounted for. Firstly, whilst Forex markets are open 24 hours, they do exhibit structural changes of wider spreads as a result of reduced liquidity in the crossover between major trading regions. Uh, subsequently, this inability to always capture the quoted price is a factor that we must be mindful of uh, and is a technical term coined as slippage. Uh, secondly, each currency pair demonstrates its own behavioral characteristics, uh, which are the consequence of the underlying structure uh, of the individual market within which it operates. So an example of this is the Aussie dollar Japanese yen, which is known to be a particularly volatile pair due to its uh, more macroeconomic pricing mechanisms. So subsequently further work regarding optimization for stop loss and take profits is a large component of further research. Uh, for example, rather than hard coding the number of pips uh, at which we stay, uh, top, take loss or stop profit, stop loss or take profit, uh, we've looked at using a rolling time period standard deviation based approach. Uh, this also needs to account for the fact that uh, forecasts typically exhibit less volatility than actual outcomes from our experimentation. 
Uh, Forex markets are also known for having a low signal to noise ratio. Uh, sorry, being in just a previous slide. Uh, the, a low signal to noise ratio compared to other trading markets. Uh, we believe that this, that this plays into the success of the CNN based approach as they can capture some of these dynamics. Uh, and we also believe that RNN based approaches such as LSTM have been successful due to their memory retention and being able to capture temporal dynamics. Uh, this has been the source of inspiration behind uh, looking more closely at combined RNN LSTM models uh, and also our uh, proposed novel work. So if you go to the next slide, please Bingy, I'll uh, talk to the conclusion. So in conclusion, our group has been successful uh, in evaluating backtesting 20 different academic papers. Uh, these papers have intentionally spanned a range of techniques to provide the group with greater scope for evaluation and novel research. Uh, as we've discussed, we observe that ensemble algorithms, particularly those containing RNN and CNN based approaches, generalize very well across all currencies. So for further work and development on our proposal, uh, if you could go to the next slide, please. There are two key areas of interest that we believe can improve model performance. Uh, firstly, the introduction of exogenous data, such as news releases or economic indicators, can help model learning as they are known to significantly impact currency fluctuations. An example of this is US non-farm payroll data released monthly and is globally recognized as an indicator of economic strength. This also extends to the incorporation of other forex pairs or financial assets into the broader correlation matrix. Conceptually, we believe that extending the correlation matrix can assist the generalization ability of our CNN model. And secondly, we would like to spend more time working on the architecture of the CNN model, increasing complexity and testing structures such as ResNet, DenseNet, or Inception. And these could assist in untangling more intricate relationships that exist within the data. Uh, thank you very much. And that's our presentation.